When I was in university, my first lecturer told us that we had to use whatever software was on the lab computers. This meant we had to use a version of C that was released before I was born, Vi and the Born Shell. Obviously, the smartest, most talented people in any field become lecturers, especially when the field is in high demand and anyone who is any good at it could be making 10 times more money by actually doing it rather than teaching others. That means the Born Shell is without a doubt the best terminal shell that has ever been created. Although my lecturer wasn't the brightest, he was proud that two thirds of his class would fail every semester. Bro, you know that means you suck at your job, right? He kind of has a point. These technologies are everywhere. You would be hard pressed to find a computer that doesn't come with the Born Shell pre-installed. Except, yeah, actually none of Windows computers. If your computer isn't garbage, it probably comes with the Born Shell installed. This shell is a great tool to master because it will always be available. Which is what I thought, but it's not true because the Born Shell is proprietary and isn't even the default shell on Linux. The default shell on Linux is slash bin slash sh, but this is not actually the born shell. Listen carefully, this is very simple stuff. The born shell, which is proprietary and POSIX compliant, uses sh to be invoked on Unix system. Except Linux, which is the most popular Unix system, has sh sim linked to bash, which is the born again shell. A completely different shell made by a different person, which is open source and also POSIX compliant, except only sometimes POSIX compliant and sometimes compatible with the first born shell. This all means two things. Everything may break inexplicably at any moment, and I don't think I actually ever used the Born Shell in university. Bash is supposed to act as a superset of SH, with more expressive syntax and better quality of life. Except apparently Bash has too many features because Debian decided that it was too slow to use as the default shell and uses Debian Alkist Almkiss dash instead. This is another shell that is also POSIX compliant, but also only sometimes compatible with the born shell and only sometimes compatible with the born again shell. There's also the corn shell or KSH, which is an open source backwards compatible superset of the born shell, which you may remember is the exact definition of the born again shell, except corn was created six years before the born again shell, but didn't stick around for some reason. It also borrowed features from the C shell, a competitor to the born shell that used syntax similar to C instead of a random crap that doesn't make sense that we still use to this day. Anyway, the moral of the story is that Bash is the default shell for Linux, except where we decided it was too slow and used Dash. This means that the born again shell is without a doubt the best terminal shell that's ever been created. Right? Maybe this Linux stuff is too fragmented. Apple is an opinionated company that is always right. Which of these shells did the North Star of engineering choose? Z shell? What is a Z shell? And why is it none of the other ones? Well, Z shell is an extended born shell with many improvements, including some features of bash, cache, and tcache, which is a statement that could definitely not be used to describe any of the other shells we've looked at. Z shell is basically like bash. It's backwards compatible with bash, but not always. It has better tab completion and better support for plugins. Omizush is a framework that lets you customize your shell prompt with whatever colors, information, and icons you like to give you a vastly superior user experience. It's pretty cool. Finally, I can say that Z shell is without a doubt the best terminal shell that's ever been created. Okay, but if you'd like the autocomplete in Z shell, you're going to love fish shell. Autocomplete in Z shell is like boom, and autocomplete in fish is like what? Bam. Fish is way smarter about how it autocompletes. It even understands which parts of the command are keywords and which parts are user inputs and color codes and recommends them accordingly. Going back to a normal shell after using Fish feels like typing on your phone without autocorrect. Fish doesn't give a damn about POSIX because POSIX sucks. Y is the only way to set an environment variable to set it globally. Fish lets you set a variable for the current function, the current session, the current user, or all users. This is also the part of Fish that will break everything, since it doesn't support the original syntax at all except when inlining. So any script that is not hash banked properly and sets any environment variables will just break. This actually happens all the time, and it's super annoying. But Fish is more configurable, and the scripting is more expressive than other 
Overflow shells. It feels like it was actually intended to be written, not copied and pasted from Stack Overflow. Fish feels like what a modern shell should be. It works out of the box, it's easy to use, and it's extensible to your heart's content. Paired with a prompt plugin like Starship, it gives you a clean but powerful experience that no one else can rival. Finally, I can say that Fish Shell is without a doubt the best terminal shell that has ever been created. Unless, since we're already kind of breaking backwards compatibility with ZSH, which is kind of breaking backwards compatibility with Bash, which is kind of breaking backwards compatibility with Sure, we may as well just go all the way and see what we can do if we stop caring about backwards compatibility altogether. When you run LS on Fish, it looks like this. But when you run LS on New Shell, it looks like this. Need I say more? Okay, there's actually a little more than just ASCII art here. This is an actual table of structured data. Normal shells usually have you manipulating raw strings and piping them into 20 different tools to manipulate data until it is what you expect. New shell treats everything as actual structured data, meaning I can do some more interesting operations directly in the shell. This applies to LS, but it also applies to everything else. On the other side of the complexity spectrum, you can use the same syntax to query and manipulate JSON files. Since new shell treats everything like data and also treats all data the same way, you can essentially use it as a consistent tool to replace tools like JQ, YQ, and org, while being able to do regular shell stuff with it as well. Without all the powerful data manipulation, it still behaves like a nice shell with excellent error messages, syntax highlighting, and autocomplete. You can choose to use more powerful features when you want them and use it as a regular shell the rest of the time. Okay, so surely that means I can say that new shell is without a doubt the best terminal shell that has ever been created. Unless, okay, we pretty much have a full scripting language now. So why bother learning anything new at all? Zonch is a shell that behaves exactly like a normal shell, but it also lets you write Python directly in your command line and scripts. That's pretty much it. It's just what you'd get if Bash and Python had a love child. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground, but now that we're all on the same page, I think we can all agree that the best shell is PowerShell.